very grateful that you're all here this morning. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Ebony Scott and the Family Independence Initiative team and staff for partnering with the county to bring us such an important program. I'd also like to thank Community Economic Development Administration CEO Harold Rice, who is partnering up with us to share information about the variety of utility programs available to suburban Cook County residents. And of course, I want to acknowledge the commissioners who are with us, Commissioner Miller and Commissioner Johnson. Thank you both for your support. Last, I'd like to thank my Bureau Chief of Economic Development, Soshi Flores, and her team for working diligently to launch these critical programs. My thanks also to Mark Motika. Did I do that right, Mark? Pretty good, huh? OK, and Michael Albert, who are our sign language interpreters. I'm pleased to be here to announce the launch of our $2.1 million Cook County COVID-19 Recovery Resident Cash Assistance Program. Kind of a mouthful. Funded by the CARES Act, the program provides a one-time $600 financial boost to help income eligible residents impacted by the pandemic. The cash assistance program will allow us to get money to residents in need quickly to ensure that they can pay their bills, shop for groceries, and take care of other necessities. As our recovery efforts evolve, it's important to note the county's ongoing work to provide essential resources to our residents. A week ago, our $20 million mortgage assistance program closed with more than 3,000 applications for assistance. Last week, we also opened the wait list for the Housing Choice Voucher Program through the Housing Authority of Cook County. And we've already received over 50,000, 50,000 applicants. Furthermore, we launched our rental assistance program and continue to provide critical supports to ensure that people have access to shelter and food during the pandemic. Unfortunately, COVID-19 cases are on the rise and the pandemic is far from being over. Many of our communities are facing layoffs, furloughs, and the notion of living check to check is becoming less of a possibility. People are choosing between buying groceries or paying bills. In the winter months ahead, COVID-19 will continue to be a, a tremendous stress on our communities. By some estimates, up to 8 million people, 8 million people have been pushed into poverty since May as federal aid has dried up. These numbers are concerning and they tell us that people need support paying bills, rent, putting food on the table and taking care of essential needs. And despite these challenges and the challenges being faced by cities, counties and states across the country, Congress seems nowhere near ready to approve continued unemployment benefits. Even though nationally we're facing the highest unemployment rates since the Great Depression and some seem content with stonewalling negotiations, we once again call on our federal partners for action. But in the face of these troubling times, we in local government must move forward. We must do what we can with what we have. We know that the need remains critical and urgent. That's why we're partnering with the Family Independence Institute to provide a solution that will put cash in the hands of 3,000 residents so they can find a little relief. I'm excited about the potential this partnership holds and the support we will be able to provide to people in need. Residents of suburban Cook County can go to www.cookcountyil.gov forward slash recovery. Let me say that again. www.cookcountyil.gov forward slash recovery uh, to learn more about the application process and eligibility requirements. We also encourage residents to apply for the utility assistance program offered through CETA and it's vital that we get the word out to our residents to know that they're not alone and that there are programs available to support them during these difficult times. As the pandemic continues, we will continue to work diligently and do everything we can to help businesses remain operational, create access to critical resources, and provide residents with safe shelter and the resources they need to stay in their homes. That's a promise. 
And now I'd like to introduce Commissioner Donna Miller to the podium. Thank you, good morning. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. And thank you, Madam President. I'm Cook County Commissioner Donna Miller, the sixth district, and I'd like to thank President Pret Winkle for inviting me here today, as well as Ebony Scott from the Family Independence Initiative to talk about this important program for suburban homeowners, the Cook County COVID-19 Recovery Resident Cash Assistance Program. Some of you may remember that in a guest editorial that appeared in the Daily Southtown this past April, I called for a creation of a locally targeted cash assistance program such as the one we are here to promote today as an important solution for many of our families in need in the Southland. And in May, I was proud to announce at my district office in Oak Forest the creation of the Southland Family Fund in partnership with the Family Independence Initiative and the Chicago Community Trust, whose leadership recognized the need for South suburban families struggling during this health and economic crisis brought by the COVID-19 pandemic and right away helped bring private sector resources into the fold. That fund allowed for the distribution of $500 to at least 1,000 South Suburban families in need. Research has shown that cash transfers are cost effective and have the strongest track record in reducing economic vulnerability and are proven to protect people's standards of living during crises. People receiving cash are quicker to recover their assets than those who don't. Additionally, they have significant long-term impact on people's livelihoods and communities after the immediate crisis ends. Money injected into households can stimulate demand for goods and services in local economies, leading to a quicker recovery. That's why I'm so happy to be here today to support the Cook County Resident Cash Assistance Program at this critical juncture when many families are in danger of losing their unemployment insurance. I've been encouraged to see the spirit of our first responders, businesses, government, and residents come together to support each other in the south suburbs and throughout Cook County. And this program is another example of what we can do together to help those of us who are in need. And it gives me great confidence that we will indeed get through this crisis and emerge even stronger. So again, thank you, Madam President and the rest of your administration for launching this important initiative, as well as our partner, Family Independence Initiative in Ebony, who I can say from experience, will do a great job administering this much needed program to our eligible suburban families. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How do I look? I was just concerned. I've had this mask on for a little bit and get a little self-conscious about that. So before I say my name, I just wanted to make sure that I looked appropriate. All right, thumbs up. So my name is Brandon Johnson. I represent the First District of Cook County. I'm very grateful um, the leadership of President Preckwinkle and her administration and her willingness to be bold and, and very audacious in this moment. I'm certainly impressed with my colleague Donna Miller, not just because of her style, but her commitment to um, the residents of Cook County um, and being unapologetic about her advocacy. Um, Ebony and Harold, of course, so she, your work and your commitment um, is a demonstration of what it means when government works. These are very difficult times, as we all know. Um, the harsh reality is that the pandemic has certainly exposed what many of us already knew. It's that poverty, low-income families, the working-class families of Cook County it can be very isolating. You know, I, I was just reflective on the importance of having a program like this to provide flexibility uh, for families to, to literally survive. I'm always reminded of what my grandfather would always say. My grandfather was a pastor, which sometimes annoyed me at times because uh, he always had something very profound to say in some of the most difficult moments, and sometimes you just want to be angry. And there are families that I know that are frustrated. There are families that are being, you know, pressed by the, the economic challenges of whether or not to be able to pay for rent or medicine or 
caring for a sick loved one. Where our treasure is, is where our hearts will be also. And I'm grateful that we have placed the heart of Cook County at the forefront by providing this cash assistance program so that flexibility can be maintained and lives can be saved. So thank you, Madam President, for your leadership, Commissioner Miller, and to Ebony and Harold and Soshi. We look forward to making sure that the families that will have access to these programs, uh, that their lives will be a little bit better as a result. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Ebony Scott, and I have the pleasure of representing the Family Independence Initiative. I could not be more humbled and excited to be here with you this morning. This fund represents something that is groundbreaking, not just for our region, but for our country. The work that we've done at FII for the past 20 years has always focused around getting folks to realize that the best way to eliminate poverty and to support families is by trusting directly in them and investing cash in their initiative. It has been a humbling honor to work with the President's Office and her administration and a team of people that realize that Cook County residents are strong, smart, resilient, and know exactly what they need. This is an administration that recognizes that there, is a, there are a ton of assets right here in our communities and that our families don't need patriarchal approaches and handholding. What they need is cash. What they need is investment. What they need is to have the things that they lost because of this horrible pandemic replaced. And that's what this fund represents. It represents understanding that families will get through this in partnership with government, philanthropy, and nonprofit. The amount of $600 is not something that we landed on coincidentally. Everyone in this room and watching knows that the federal government failed in many ways to do their job and to uphold the expanded unemployment benefits that people were receiving. And so the president's team decided that it was more than symbolic to make this a $600 investment. It was necessary and it was critical. As of this morning, eligible residents who live in suburban Cook County can visit our website, fund dot uptogether.org slash suburban cook county fund and immediately begin their applications we encourage everyone before they begin their application to please make sure that they have their government issued id their proof of residence and their proof of income prior to march 1st before they begin the application i want to just once again thank president preckwinkle and her entire team for their investment in the people of cook county and I also want to thank Commissioner Donna Miller, who without her leadership, to be quite honest, this probably wouldn't be happening, and especially at the speed at which it happened. She pressed philanthropy and us at FII to get involved and to realize that the suburbanization of poverty is real and that what people are experiencing in the, in the suburbs is just as critical as those in the city of Chicago. And so this is a unique opportunity for other leaders around our state, our region, and our country to take a look at what's happening at Cook County and to step up and do the same thing. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Harold Rice, President and Chief Executive Officer of CETA. Uh, we're extremely excited about the partnership with Cook County on the Utility Bill Assistance Program. I want to give my heartfelt thanks to President Tony Preckwinkle and her vision for Chicagoland that supports its residents and ensures basic human rights are met, like access to utilities. My organization, CETA, is partnering with the county to ensure high-quality services are delivered to residents. We are leveraging our more than 50 years of service, education, and engagement with local residents. Many of you know us through a number of programs that we have, specifically our LIHEAP program, the Heat and Assistance Program. Now more than ever, many household utility bills are already straining limited family budgets. In some cases, the households are being forced to make difficult decisions between necessities. That's where CETA is here for you. We can help. You can reach out to us online at www.cetaorg.net forward slash find services. Given these unprecedented times brought about 
by the COVID-19 pandemic, we are committed to working together to reduce poverty and realize low-income communities empower our, our residents and citizens. At CETA, we are proud to partner with the county and continue servicing our community through the Utility Bill Assistance Program. President Preckwinkle, on behalf of hundreds of thousands of individual CETA services in Cook County, we thank you. Good morning, Soshi Flores, Cook County Bureau Chief of Economic Development. Thank you for joining us this morning. I would like to thank our partners and our commissioners for their engagement and their ongoing support of our initiatives over the last couple of months. I would like to also give a special thanks to Ebony Scott and the Family Independence Initiative for your vision, continued support, and partnership. I'd also like to thank Harold Rice and CETA for working with us to connect people to valuable resources that are critical during this time. Oftentimes, it appears that just informing individuals of resources that are needed is something that government and a trusted resource needs to play. So I'm glad that we're here in partnership with these organizations to inform individuals of these resources. Everything we are doing to help suburban Cook County families has required collaboration. Whether it's working with organizations such as FII to find a bold approach to provide direct cash assistance, or if it's simply to make sure people are aware of programs offering utility assistance such as CETA's program, our efforts will continue. We will be the trusted voice that individuals are looking for during these times. As many of our speakers mentioned, families are seeing some very difficult times. Cook County will continue to roll up our sleeves, leverage our networks, and build on our public, private, and philanthropic partnerships to get the financial resources that are needed during this time and continue the programs and services that we have been offering over the last several months. Since the first days of this pandemic, the Cook County Bureau of Economic Development has focused on the most critical needs of residents and small businesses in suburban Cook County. The Community Recovery Initiative includes programs to provide thousands of residents with food, shelter, housing counseling, rental assistance, and today we proudly announced direct cash and utility assistance. The pandemic has led to unprecedented job losses and financial instability for residents as they struggle to meet essential daily needs like food, shelter, electricity, and heat. COVID has forced individuals and families to make hard choices to stay healthy, to maintain their well-being, keep food on the table, a roof over, the head, over their heads, and their bills paid. Fortunately, we can offer some assistance during this time. Cook County launched the COVID-19 Recovery Resident Cash Assistance Program because we know it provides what people need the most at this time, cash. Poverty rates in Illinois are the highest they've been in over 50 years. Children, women, and people of color have the highest rates, with 50% of black and Latino families affected. Research shows that direct cash, and cash assistance provides most efficient and effective way to help families knock down barriers to mobility. The application for a cash resident assistance program opens today and will remain open until November 6. I also encourage residents to sign up for utility bill assistance through CETA's program. Information about these two programs can be found on our website, www.cookcountyil.gov forward slash recovery. We plan to continue our work over the coming year to keep families housed, businesses open, and create an equitable pathway for our communities and businesses in Cook County. Thank you very much. All right, where is Nick? All right. All right, so I know we have a couple of reporters in the room with us today as well as on the line. Let's start with the ones in the room. Yep, Diane from Channel 7, you want to go Yes, there? Diane from Channel 7, Madam President. Hi, Diane. We're hearing from our sources that the governor is going to talk about more mitigation for Cook County this week because of rising hospitalization. Can you talk about 
more mitigation and what that means for Cook County residents? I think we'll have to wait till the governor makes this decision. And then we'll follow the advice as we always do of uh, our public health professionals at the state and local level. I wanted to reach out to residents, especially talking about money right now. It's a frightening time. Those people that apply and, and, and can get the money, that's wonderful. What about those that maybe can't get it right now and are hoping for something later on? There's an election on November 3rd. I strongly urge folks to support Vice President Biden and Kamala Harris, who are committed to trying to address this pandemic uh, forcefully and equitably. Um, we haven't seen that out of this present administration. It's been a nightmare, not just for our, our families, but for local government as well. So we have an opportunity in almost a week, a little more than a week, to make some changes at the federal level and get the help and support we need. How big of a dent does this put in the need? How many more families are there out there who need help than that 3,000 number you mentioned? Well, there are a tremendous number of people who, who need help for sure. Um, Ebony, thank you. So the application will remain open for 10 days. It will close um, at 11.59 p.m. on November 6th. Our team of dedicated support professionals will then begin to review applications. Using our technology platform, it allows for the immediate payout of funds once an application is reviewed. On average, it takes about seven minutes per application for a support team member to review that application. What are you looking for when people are applying? Is there a certain household, for example, yeah, great question. So there are one income guidelines. Um, this is a fund specifically for families who were low, who were experiencing low incomes prior to March 1st. Additionally, you have to be a resident of suburban Cook County. So our support team will verify residency uh, within the county. So applicants do have to submit check stubs, tax returns, whatever information they have that verifies what their pre-March 1st income is. Uh, yeah, can you talk about the utility assistance program, like how much money is going into that? Utility assistance, I think that's you, Harold. Yeah. In order to qualify, well, first of all, the governor increased the um, the federal poverty guidelines. It used to be at 150 percent. Now it's up to 200 percent. But just as an example, a family of four making $4,367 a month, and that's for 30 consecutive days, qualifies. Okay. Anything else, Alan? Uh -huh. um, any estimates of just how much money each person could get in assistance or each household? Um, I think there's a one time benefit of a couple of hundred dollars that they, they get. Yeah, we get that exact number of you, Alice. Yes. All right, any other questions? And do we have any other reports on the line? Okay, I think Diane had one more. Madam President, if I can go back to the hospitalization question, can we talk about specifically, if you can, what is the situation right now in Cook County Hospitals? Where are we standing? Um, the last time I heard, uh, there were less than a couple dozen uh, patients in our hospital who had COVID-19. Um, I would caution, however, that in the spring, at the height of the pandemic, uh, half of our hospital beds uh, were taken up by people who had COVID-19. So we expect uh, when the uh, pandemic ramps up again, as it's clearly doing, uh, that we will be heavily impacted. The extent of that impact is uncertain. Anything else? 